Hey babies, it's me Nana. Welcome to Bedtime with Nana. You ready for your bedtime story? Get your pajamas on. And come on, let's get comfy and we're gonna read a bedtime story. It's called Louise the Big Cheese and the La Dee Da Shoes. La Dee Das. The La Dee Das. And this is by Elise, Elise Primavera and illustrated by Diana Good. Okay, the cheesies and their La Dee Da Shoes. Pretty picture. Okay, this is tapiocaville. Tapiocaville shoes. You see those shoes by the Mr. Cheese and Mrs. Cheese. Okay. Louise Cheese was a small girl who lived in a sleepy town on a quiet street in a modest house. She longed for her mother to wear a sparkly pink dress like a glamorous movie star. She prayed for her father to get all decked out in a cape and a gold crown like the head, handsome prince in all the stories. But Mr. and Mrs. Cheese didn't give a fig about trying to look like anybody other than who they were. Louise, on the other hand, did. In fact, more than anything else in the world, Louise wanted to look like a big cheese. Big cheese. But it wasn't easy. Every morning, Louise got up and put on the same skirt with a stretched out elastic waist. Dopey skirt. Dopey as the day is long, says the little doggy. She always put on the same little boring shirts and worst of all, the same little brown lace school shoes with the sticky rubber soles that squeaked when she walked. Will you be quiet? Squeak, squeak, squeak. I have some of those. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Yeah, put a lid on it. You ever had any of those squeaky shoes? I have. Louise wished she had a shiny patent leather, she wished she had shiny patent leather pumps as black as licorice, sparkles on the toes like her big sister Penelope had. Those patent leather pumps are only for la -dee da occasions. Can I borrow these for school tomorrow? A special occasion. Is the Lottie Da occasion? Oh, you mean like when I go to meet the Queen at Luckingham Palace? I think that's Buckingham. Luckingham, Buckingham. It's a palace, isn't it? Because Louise was so little, she was not allowed to borrow Penelope's things. Out! And furthermore, you're not allowed to borrow my things. Those big sisters. Those big sisters. Louise wished she could step into those black patent leather pumps with the sparkles on the toes and walk right out of her tiny room and into a palace to meet the queen. Nice shoes. Thank you, your royal Lottie Donis. Louise did, told her best friend Fern that she should get rid of her old grass-stained sneakers with a splotch of ketchup on the right foot. She should wish for black patent leather pumps with sparkles on the toes so that she could go to Paris and be a fashion, in a fashion show. But don't you think we're too little to go to Paris and be in a fashion show? Dream big, that's my motto. Dream big, dream big, yes, I was dream big. And then Mrs. Cheese announced that she was taking her shopping for shoes. And Louise knew this was her big chance. She could already see herself walking to school in the black patent leather pumps with the sparkles on the toes. With shoes like that, Louise was sure that the other kids would think she lived in a mansion, wore gold underwear, and had two ponies in her backyard. With shoes like that, the other kids would think she was a big cheese. A big cheese. Louise marched into the store, asked the saleswoman where the Lottie Da shoes were, and went straight to where he pointed, and plucked them off the table. Lottie Da, Chi Chi shoes, Lady Special Occasion, Good See Lucy, Goosey Lucy, Boots with Bling, Coco Chanel, Ste Ste Steward Wharton, Steward Wharton, Wharton, shoes. 
We'll take these, Louise's mother held a pair of little brown lace shoes with sticky rubber soles. Soothe your stove with Carly's corn cushions. Ligly, ugly shoes to sensible girls. No more tears, pure comfort. Arnie's arch supports. Goody two shoes with straight laces. Bob's best bunion busters. Oh, wow. Mom's favorites. Practical and sturdy, everyday shoes. Ugly, Uggs. Ortho really comfy shoes. Ha 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 ha. Blister be gone shoes. Let's see what mom picked. Moms tend to always pick those. <laughs> please, please. Those shoes are not for little girls, young lady. Jimmy Choo Choo. No, these, Louise called out, waving the patent leather ones. You're too little for shoes like those, Mrs. Chi said. You need something for every day. I'll wear these every day. She could not believe what she was seeing when her mother actually went right ahead and bought the little brown lace shoes with the sticky rubber soles anyway. You can't even wear them in bad weather. They are too la -dee da You can never be too la -dee da Never. On the way home, Louise and Pee-wee sat in the back seat of the car. The brown lace shoe sat in a box with a gray tissue the color of old gym socks. These are worse than the last shoes. Much worse. With shoes like these, nobody would ever think she had a mansion or wore gold underwear. There would be no ponies, only a lifetime of stinking brown shoes with sticky rubber soles that squeaked when you walked. I'll probably never get invited to all the good parties. You'll probably have to be a hermit. What's a hermit? A hermit sits all alone in a crummy cave and eats worms. Most of them wear brown lace shoes. Brown lace shoes. Those hermits. That night at dinner, Louise told her mother, her father, and Penelope that if she didn't get the la dee shoes, she would have to become a hermit. We'll take our chances. I'll find you the perfect crummy cave. Pee-wee cried because he knew that he would have to be a hermit with Louise. Why? Penelope was glad and said she would even help make currants for Louise's crummy cave. Bon appetit! Maca worm mix. We got maca worm mix, worm jam, wormy celery, wormaroni, worm burger helper, and night crawlers. Mmm, doesn't that sound yummy? No. The next morning, Louise did not feel any better until she saw Fern skipping up the street for their walk to school. Maybe she and Fern could both be hermits. After all, Fern had been wearing the same grass-stained ketchup-y sneakers since second grade. But there was something different about Fern. Suddenly, Louise could see that the old beat-up sneakers were gone, and in their place were new black patent leather pumps with sparkles on the toes. Do you want to try them on? No. Don't you think they're pretty? They have to they are totally impractical. They are too la dee da. I didn't think you could be too la dee da. Well, you can. Louise hoped Fern would go back home and put on sneakers with some dress stains. <laughs> but Fern did not do that. Fern felt good in the la dee da shoes. In fact, Fern, Fern felt great. In fact, Fern felt like a big cheese. At 9 o'clock, she told the entire class about her weekend in Paris at a fashion show. Woo! Ooh la la, runway show. Hoity toity, extravagant. Wow, fantastic. Oh la la, said Tress. La di da. You did not go to fashion a fashion show in Paris. I did not just go. I was in it. You were not. <coughs> I was too. Girls, their teacher said. Mrs. Little said. <coughs> At 10 o'clock, Fern hogged all the yellow finger paints and made a big mess. It's for the Queen's crown. We met in Paris. You did not. I did too. Girls, girls, Mrs. Little said. At 11 o'clock, 
During recess, Fern made everybody play her new game, Jump Scotch Hop Baseball, which she said was all the rage in Paris. Too bad it's not even a game. It is too. It is not. Girls, 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 Mrs. Little scolded. Man. It was cupcake day and because Fern was such a big cheese now, at 12 o'clock she ate three. She ate my cupcake. So what? So buttons. Girls, 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 Mrs. Little said. What has gotten into you both? At one o'clock, Fern got up and left right in the middle of the story because it was a boring story. Hey, come back here. Why should I? Ooh. And at 2.30, Louise and Fern were both sitting in the corner because Mrs. Little had had quite enough of them both. There in the corner, Louise whispered to Fern, This is all your fault for acting so big. Oops, big. A half hour later, wait, you should talk. A half hour later, the bell rang and Mrs. Little excused the girls, but Fern didn't move. Come on, Fern, Louise said. Let's walk home. I've had enough of this day. But Fern still did not answer. Fern still did not move. She was staring at her feet. What is on her feet? What? Oh, no. She was staring at her feet because three sparkles were missing from the right shoe and five from the left. Both heels were scuffed up and some of the patent leather was, leather was peeling off. There was a big blob of yellow paint on the left side and a big scratch on the right. The Lottie Dodge shoes are ruined, Louise said, as sadly as she could when in fact she felt happy. Oh, well, let's just walk home. I can't walk home. Why not? Because I can't walk. Fern showed Louise two blisters the size of a dime on each of her heels. I know, Louise said. We'll just trade shoes. Mm -mm. Louise put on the patent leather pumps with what was left of the sparkles on the toes and noticed that they rubbed her heels too. Fern put on the little brown lace shoes and laughed because they squeaked when she walked as well. I guess a little la dee da goes a long way. Fern agreed as she limped home. Her stomach didn't feel so hot from all the cupcakes either. I was wondering about that one. When they got to Fern's house, Louise helped her put a band-aid on each heel. Pee-wee arrived a minute later and made Fern a nice cup of hot tea for her stomach. Louise helped Fern put on some comfy socks and got her a pillow for her head. That's so much better. Just before they left, Pee-wee poked at the ruined la dee -da shoes with his nose. Outside, a single star appeared and sparkled in the twilight sky over the sleepy town on the quiet street. Now Fern will have to be a hermit, too. I know, but as long as we're together, I don't think she'll mind. Squeak, 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 squeak. In her little brown lace shoes, Louise Cheese walked home with Pete at her side. Pee-wee at her side. Pee-wee. Pee there ought to be hermits. I still want la dee shoes so I can be a big cheese. Do you? Pick one answer for each question. Okay. I have to put this in the comments. At Bedtime with Nana at Yahoo.com. Okay. On my dream vacation, I want to A. Hike the Rockies B. Hike the Ro Hike Rodeo Drive in Los Angeles. Shopping. Visit Williamsburg, Virginia and learn how to make candles. A, B, or C. Number two. When I grow up, I want to marry A, the so-so prince with a good personality, B, the cute prince with a trust fund, or C, polka, dot dance, polka dance instructor who makes great strudel. Hmm. Number three. My favorite thing to do is A, eat brownies in my snuggly flannel pajamas and fluffy slippers. B. Eat scones in my roughly dress, preferably with a queen. C. Eat trail mix with my horse, Trigger, out on the range. Number four. Let me back up my six. Okay. I like to play A. Checkers. B. Chopsticks on the piano. C. Dress up in sparkly clothes. Number five. What would you give to have la dee da shoes? My little brother, A. B, the tube socks my aunt gave me on my last birthday. Or C, all my worldly possessions.
Number six, Lottie Doll Shoes go best with A, white socks with ruffles, B, fishnets and a bowler, or C, barefoot and odor eater. Okay, if you want to answer those questions, just send them to that email. BedtimeWithNath at gmail dot, I mean, yahoo.com. I'm so sorry. Yahoo. <laughs> Alright, I hope you like that story. We all want to be big cheeses, but sometimes big cheese, with the big cheese comes some big pain. Yes. Yes, it does. Well, I hope you enjoyed our bedtime story. Have sweet dreams, and I'll see you tomorrow.